So today I will be playing with zombie. Well, it's not a real zombie after all. Just an electronics PCB called Zombieverter VCU. Well, the reason why it's called zombie because rather than removing Toyota Brain and replacing it with Open Inverter Board like I did in my previous project, this will allow you to control inverter through the communication protocol while still using Toyota Electronics and the processor board. One of my subscribers reached out and asked for some help with his board and I stopped my Tesla work and returned to Zombie. So I cleared the cobwebs of the Zombie box and put it on my bench. Quick power test was needed, but as I've done it before, I've decided just to get on with mounting the Wi-Fi board. Luckily, I have made a handy board that will allow me to mount straight into the mounting spot for the Polymex. And now, my dear viewers, it's exciting time of applying the power. Yes, the lights are on, it means it's working. And of course, the test would not be complete without loading up the web page and updating the firmware on the Zombieverter ECU. All worked well. Well done. Right, so this is the mystery box I received. One of my subscribers asked for help and I usually don't do things like that, but this poor guy had this for about two years and he can't get it to work. So this is the Zombieverter VCU, so it's all assembled with the Wemos module. There are two VCU boards, one is ready to go and another one practically partially assembled. First thing to do is to find out what's happening with the power. And that's what I always do on any board. Soldered in the power cables. So I powered on the board. I'm actually using current limited power supply over here. And when I enable power, just in case something goes wrong, it will power the board off. We should have roughly 12 volts. It's 11, 8.6. All right, so we do have five volts. This is very good. This capacitor over here should give us 3.3 .3 volts, so 3.29. So supply voltages are great and they are quite stable as well. And this was the point when I uncovered the actual problem. When VCU was powered on, activity light would not come on. And this, I thought, might be an indication that processor wasn't actually running. And I decided to reprogram VCU and start from reprogramming the bootloader. I reprogrammed the bootloader and reprogrammed the main program. And to my surprise, the activity LED would start to come on. Wow, that means system is working. I connected the Wi-Fi module and I found that I get proper reading while my programmer is connected. Great, yippee, the board is actually working. But something is preventing software from being run on the processor. First thing I needed to check was of course boot zero. This is the pin that should be pulled low as according to the circuit diagram, it has a 10K resistor connected to the ground. As a first course of action, I decided to check the resistor and bingo, it appears to be it's actually 10 mega ohm, not 10 kilo ohm, which left the pin floating and not pulled low. That's the problem. I have to replace the resistor and see if I can get processor to run. I scavenged the resistor from partially populated board and placed it on fully populated board. This allowed me to replace the resistor with the right value. I quickly reconnected board back to the power supply and this would be a testing time. Powering up the board quickly revealed that the execution LED activity started to flash. Hooray! That means I fixed the problem. The soldered resistor provided reliable pull down for our boot zero pin and software was executed properly. I started the web interface, connected to Wi-Fi module and managed to get all the values on the web interface as well as update the firmware. Hooray! Problem is solved.